Hello everyone, Michael O'Brien here, and today we're going to be taking a look at The Imagination Project, Volumes 1 and 2. Hello my friends, and thank you so much for watching this video. Last week I talked about my new book, The Imagination Project, Volume 3. Now I've heard some great things from people already that are super stoked about this project, things from people that have already bought it that say that so far they're absolutely loving the material that's in there. To those of you who have already purchased Volume 3, thank you so much. You guys are rock stars, and I love you to death. Um, now, if you have not already done so, you are welcome to grab your copy still. And if you're still in the month of September 2021, and you're watching this video and you're like, oh, I haven't gotten my copy yet, head over to O'BrienMagic.com. You can purchase that copy as well as volumes one and two uh, for a discounted price. Now to figure out how to do that, watch the video below, link in the description to volume three, so you guys can check this out. But one thing that I've heard a few people say now is, oh, that's so cool, you got a book coming out. I didn't even know that there was a volume one and a volume two. So in this video, uh, I am going to go ahead and talk about those. Again, you wanna pick any of this stuff up, head over to obrienmagic.com and check out the Imagination Project, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. So I'm not going to talk about every single thing that's in here. Uh, volume 1 contains some of my best material that I think I've ever put out. And just so, so much of the stuff in here is classic Michael O'Brien magic, if that makes any sense. Uh, some of my earliest projects, for those of you who know me, all the way back to Tour de Force and all of that stuff will know the material that's in this book. So... Uh, in this one, I was still kind of figuring out um, how I wanted to divide the book. It kind of uh, all runs together, sort of. It's all card magic at the top, and then magic with other objects as you get down to the bottom. Coin magic, some early purse framework of mine, sponge balls, even my strolling chop cup is in here. So I wanted to just talk about a couple of these things. Um, obviously, I'm not going to talk about everything in the book. If you guys want to check out the table of contents, Again, go to obrienmagic.com and check out the books. I have all the table of, content, uh, table of contents listed there uh, so you guys can check it out. Um, but just some of my favorite ones, right? Like uh, drawing a blank. Now that's the one where I introduce a blank deck of cards. I have the spectators, you know, imagine that the faces, ha the, the, the blank cards had faces, right? So they're thinking of a face in their mind. And then I do an ambitious style kind of routine with it where I make their blank card rise at the top a couple of times. And it's all a gag, right? Because they're all blank. But then I ask them, what card are you thinking of? They tell me, for example, Seven of Hearts. That card is isolated the whole time. It never goes near the deck again. I pick up that card, magically change it into the Seven of Hearts, and then proceed to print all of the rest of the cards as well. And everything ends clean. The deck can be handed out and examined. It was my go-to opener for like the longest time, uh, usually when I do any kind of card set. So if you guys are looking for a really cool opener, I recommend checking that out. Um, now on the other end of the spectrum, I have uh, the Chicago Closer, which is my go-to closer <laughs> for the longest time uh, during my card set. And that one is essentially my take on the Red Hot Mama Chicago opener plot. And what it is, is actually a color changing deck routine. So I pull out a red deck of cards, I ask a spectator to name any card, that card is shown, lost back into the deck, the deck is shuffled, and then I just wave my hand over the cards and the top card of the deck changes from red to blue. But not just the top card, actually I spread through and every single card is changed, except for one, and it is their chosen card. Right? Standard color changing deck stuff so far. Then I go on to say, let's do that one more time. I take the red card, set it aside underneath the card case or in my pocket or wherever, right? Somewhere out in the open, visible for them to see. I then have a second card chosen from the deck at random. That card is memorized, lost into the deck again. Only this time, I can't seem to locate that red card. Of course, the audience reminds me, well, there's a red card right there in your pocket. I remove that red card and show it. And what do you know? It's the second selected card. Then, for a nice kicker finale ending, I say something along the lines of, you know, this whole time we've been using our imagination, hence the imagination project, right? We've been using our imagination and uh, we were able to, you know, see all of these impossible things happen. Things that would never have been possible 
without your help and without you guys uh, using your imagination and all that good stuff. And what I mean by that is remember at the beginning when I printed those cards, actually I never printed the cards, they've been blank this whole time. And then I, of course, I revealed the deck that we had just been using and all of those cards are blank. And those cards can be handed out and examined and it's a completely blank deck of cards. And um, that one debuts my switcheroo deck holdout gimmick, which is essentially a leather holdout that I created that sits in your pocket and you can place a full size deck of cards in there and it gives you easy access to be able to steal that deck. So you could do some deck switches and I teach some deck switches, some routines and stuff like that. Um, the beginnings of that are in here. We're gonna talk a little bit more about it when we get to volume two, but the beginnings of that effect are in here in volume one. So uh, another thing is Tour de Force. That is my In the Hands Triumph effect. And actually my first product that I ever released uh, to the market it's my In The Hands Triumph effect that is super fair and super clean. And those of you who maybe have my Penguin Live Act have seen this, you've probably seen multiple videos on this channel. I recommend you guys check out my channel and uh, look for Tour de Force performance videos. You'll see a bunch of different videos on here, uh, different variations of the effect. But this is the original as, original, as originally created. Uh, again, stay tuned to volume two because we're gonna talk about some of the variations in there as well as volume three, there's variations on Tour de Force in volume three as well, but just a really clean Triumph effect. For those of you who are not, not aware of Triumph, half the cards are mixed into half the cards face down. Uh, normally you need to do a riffle shuffle on the table, but my version uses a Faro shuffle, so you don't have to worry about uh, having a table or anything. Everything is in the hands. There's a clean display. You can riffle through the face up cards, turn the deck around, riffle through the face down cards. Let the audience even square it up if they want to. You're not holding any breaks or anything. Spread the deck and show the state of cards is all mixed up. And then just with the snap of the fingers, you spread again. Every card is face down except for the one card that they chose, the only face up card. So just a really clean uh, version of the Triumph effect. Um, what else is in here? There's a bunch of really cool stuff. Um, let's talk about Levand. That's another one of my favorites. Uh, that is a four card oil and water routine. It's a three phase routine with multiple convincers and the effect gets increasingly more and more impossible every time you do it. Uh, each, each individual phase can be performed on its own as a smaller part of a larger thing or you can perform it the way that you uh, learn it here in the book. If you have not already become a member, uh, you're able to click the join button, become a member and learn all of this Levand oil and water, my six card oil and water and my eight card oil and water. Uh, in the ultimate oil and water uh, tutorial video that's on uh, that's on my channel and the tutorials only playlist. You got a bunch of different cool stuff there to watch. So I recommend you guys check that out too. But the early beginnings of that routine in here, um, as well as card to pocket. Now that's card to pocket, P-O-K-E with an accent T. <laughs> uh, that is my card to Pokeball, card to Pokemon card to pocket routine. One of my personal favorites still to this day to perform. So the first ever Pokemon routine that I released is right here inside of this book. So really cool stuff. Um, now let's move away from the card stuff. There's a lot of card magic in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 of the effects in this book are all card magic. So a lot of card magic in here. Um, I also have uh, some coin stuff, three gone gin right, which is my uh, handling of the three coin vanish effect, and um, three coins to uh, Merlot, three coins to glass, which is my coins to wine glass routine. Um, essentially, you show three coins, you produce them, you make them vanish, and then you produce them again, right? Um, and then the coins to glass is just a very clean variation on the coins to glass plot, where one at a time, you toss the coins in the air and they invisibly travel to the glass. So just really cool. Uh, and then it's all punctuated with a full um, wine bottle production on there. You can see the glass, uh, you can see the coins, right? I have a sponge ball routine, all this stuff. And I'm very proud of this cover. I came up with this idea. One of my brilliant moments, <laughs> not too many of those anymore, um, but uh, I'm eating the deck of cards. I'll let you guys see that kind of fun stuff. Um, I tried the, the inspiration here was to try to have a lot of the stuff that's going to be in the book be there. Now, I don't teach you how to eat cards in the book or anything like that, but I just thought that it was a fun visual thing. Um, the rose as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place here. I'm trying to, to get through some of my favorites. Um, the Strolling Chop Cup is another uh, fan favorite. 
A lot of people have told me that that's probably their favorite thing in this book that isn't card related. Um, that is essentially a three phase chop cup routine that again can be done without a table. You'll learn that a lot of my material is essentially a twist on a classic um, that is just brought into the strolling scene because a lot of my gigs are all strolling gigs and stuff. So uh, we eliminate the table for a lot of that stuff. So uh, strolling chop cup, there's a moment in that routine where the cup is actually placed in the spectator's hands, right? So they're holding the cup like this and I take the ball and I pass it through their hand and they can feel it the moment that it goes in their hand. So it's a, it's a really cool routine. I recommend you guys check that one out. Um, now, uh, last but not least, let's talk about Rose and Hatline Prediction, right? So Rose uh, is essentially a sponge ball routine only using a real rose. Uh, the rose is produced from a handkerchief or you can use flash paper if you want to produce it with fire. And then the rose petals are plucked off the rose and used in a sort of sponge ball type routine where the rose petals travel from one spectator's hand to another. And then at the very end, I take the rose petals, I place them back onto the rose and then the rose is handed out to the spectator to keep. Um, the hat line prediction is my closer slash encore anytime I'm out doing street performance, busking. Uh, essentially, I hand out an envelope with a prediction in it from the very beginning of my whole act. I do my whole act and then I take off the hat, I toss out the hat and I ask for people to please, if you enjoyed my performance, to toss money in there. They do and then as an act of gratitude for all of the wonderful tips that people have tossed in, I gather up some of the bills, I spread them out, I have a spectator touch any bill that they want. It is a completely free choice. The bill is removed, set inside my pocket, the rest of the bills tossed in the hat the spectator then um, opens up the, uh, the prediction. The bill is handed back out to the spectator and they can examine everything. And the serial number matches the prediction that I wrote inside the envelope. And it's just a really cool closer. And um, again, really easy to perform. There's only like one move that you gotta learn and the move isn't even that difficult. So cool stuff, that's volume one. Let's go ahead and dive into volume two now. Volume two has a lot of really cool stuff in it as well. Um, as you can see, a little bit more organized in volume one. I broke stuff up a little bit better, right? Uh, so in this book, we have cards, cards, and more cards. A bunch more card magic. Uh, we have some revisits. So this is me going back and tinkering with things um, from the original uh, volume one. Uh, maybe I decided to change something or I added some new bits to an existing routine, stuff like that. Um, mostly self-working card magic. So semi-automatic easy to do magic tricks uh, using a deck of cards. Um, the pocket utility switch. Now, uh, we talked a little bit about the hat line prediction before that uses the pocket utility switch to actually switch out the bill. Uh, I go into a lot of detail with the pocket utility switch here. Uh, I teach uh, one, two, three, four different routines using that. The switcheroo deck holdout. Remember, we talked about that with the Chicago closer routine. I teach one, two, three, four routines using that. Uh, some more coin magic stuff. All of my invisible purse material is in here. So uh, anything that you've seen me do with the with the purse frame, invisible purse, that is in this book here. Uh, some close up linking ring stuff, right? And some um, mentalism and pseudo hypnosis stuff. And that's pretty much everything that's in here. Um, now just to point out maybe one or two of my favorites. Uh, again, if you guys wanna go through this and see everything, you're welcome to go ahead and visit my website, obrienmagic.com. Check out the online store and look at volume one, volume two, and volume three, respectively. And you'll see the uh, table of contents is posted right there. So you guys can browse through and see um, which ones you like, or why not pick up all three, right? So um, let's talk about um, Blindsided, is, uh, actually Blindsided 2.0. It's based on Oz Perlman's Blindsided, which is a color changing deck routine. Um, his handling, in my opinion, it was pitched as a, a beginner's card magic effect, um, but his handling of it, it was a little bit more advanced in my opinion. It had built in misdirection, but the actual getting the deck into the position and forcing out the card and all that stuff, it was just a little bit knacky. So this is my handling of that essentially, and I knock out all of the knack. And instead of doing it as a color changing deck plot, I decided to do it as a blank deck plot. So uh, I take out a blank deck of cards, blank face, and uh, I show through all the cards, they're all blank, right? And then I say, here, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have you go ahead and say stop whenever you want. Stop right there, memorize that card. Of course, it's blank, throw it back in. Perfect, I'm gonna hand you the whole deck, hold it between your hands just like this. 
and I'm gonna reach in the deck and I'm gonna pull out your card. So I reach in as they're holding the deck like this, I pull out one card and I reveal it and it's the blank card and I go, isn't that impressive? I found your card. Of course, everyone goes, eh, not really, they're all blank. And I go, well, you know what? I think it would be better if we made this card different from all the other ones, right? So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and give it a wave and it's gonna change, watch. And I wave the card and nothing happens. And they look kind of kind of confused. And they go, oh, well, you know, it did change, but not, not the card that I'm holding. Actually, all of the other ones, go ahead and have a look. And the deck that they've been holding this whole time, they're all printed now, faces and backs, all 52 cards are there and they can go through and uh, the deck is completely clean. You can start using it as your opener or whatever. So that's one that's really cool and really easy to perform. Um, for some revisits, I teach my double dribble control, which is a, a control. It's not really a control. It's more like a, a sequence of controls kind of routine together uh, that allow you to move two different cards from two different parts of the deck to the top simultaneously in a really clean display. And it's really easy to do. Um, this is a revisit because I do teach the original handling in volume one, but in this one, it's a little bit of a cleaner variation, I think. Um, and for the revisits, I teach the whole thing all the way through. I don't just talk about the changes. So if you don't have volume one and you have volume two and you want to check out the revisits in here, I teach that stuff all the way through. So, um, mostly self-working. I have a tour de farce routine, which is... Uh, a super watered down, easier version of my Tour de Force Triumph. Um, I also have uh, an X marks the spot routine, um, which is uh, the spectator chooses a card, right? Uh, or should I say, I choose a card, I write my name on it, uh, like I sign the face of the card. Uh, I shuffle it back into the deck and then I hand the deck to the spectator, they mix it up behind their back, they take the pen and they draw a giant X on one of the cards, and then um, the, the deck is spread out to find the one with the signature on it, and the one with the signature on it has the X on the back and all of the other cards are clean. So, uh, kind of a pretty cool little self, it's a self-working routine, so really easy. Um, pocket utility switch stuff, I teach my pocket card at any number, a pocket transposition, a pocket sandwich, and do as you want. Do as you want is one of my personal favorite routines to perform using this method. Uh, essentially what it is, is I have uh, a red deck and a blue deck and I have a spectator pick which deck they want to use. And it's not like a magician's choice in the way that you think. It's not like, oh, which one do you want to use, red or blue? And no matter what, we're always going to use the red cards. Uh, we really do use the deck that they want to use for the routine. And essentially the way that it goes is a card is chosen completely fairly from a red deck set in the pocket. Then a card is chosen completely fairly from a blue deck and um, let's just say they chose the Six of Spades. I then put the deck away. I pull out the Six of Spades out of the pocket, uh, the red Six of Spades, so it's like a match, right? A uh, nice little prediction routine. Um, the Switcheroo deck holdout, I teach a bunch of different effects in here. Um, the mini deck is probably my favorite one that I teach in this book, um, where I show a miniature deck of cards. Uh, I have a card chosen from a miniature deck or multiple cards chosen, and the uh, little tiny little deck of cards grows into a full-size deck of cards. Um, the cards are named that the chick spectators chose, and then with just a snap, a bunch of cards pop out of the deck, and uh, it's the uh, the chosen cards, but they're the still they're still the miniature cards. So only the rest of the deck grew, except for the mini cards. So interesting little thing there. Um, some coin magic stuff. Uh, I have a one coin routine. These are all Star Wars themed, right? <laughs> Obi Wan coin Obi my uh, one coin routine uh, sort of a revisit with Trigon Jin. I add a little bit more subtlety to it um, you'll remember that one from volume one and sleeveless in Seattle which is essentially my final phase uh, where uh, I make the coins vanish again so really cool stuff um, the invisible purse now uh, my sponge bowl routine the one that you guys know me uh, have you seen my purses in there uh, I have a really cool coin routine that is sort of a tribute to Eugene Berger uh, the sharp, the sharpie routine is in there. Uh, the handkerchief routine is in there. Billiard ball to <laughs> to purse. Uh, card to invisible purse. Folded card to invisible purse. And even how to produce a full sized beer bottle from the purse. So a lot of good stuff. Uh, close up linking rings. Uh, I teach the bar blade routine with special permission from Tom Brooks. Uh, my ignition switch, um, where I make a, a key jump off of a ninja ring and link onto the key ring. 
and uh, Daryl, my tribute to Daryl, which is a linking rings and ropes routine, and Ninja Rings Abridged, which is my four ring routine that is a tribute to Shudagawa's Ninja Ring routine, but just a very shortened tableless version uh, that is designed to uh, allow the spectators to feel like they've examined all the rings. Last but not least, for my mentalism and pseudo hypnosis, uh, I teach a couple of different uh, routines in here using. Uh, again, the pocket utility switch. I have a tribute to Bob Cassidy, which is a sort of billet routine, kind of like a, uh, what's it called, person in place, I think is the name of the routine. It's based on that one. Uh, a Rosetta Stone, where uh, I have a spectator uh, try to read a word in a language that they don't understand. I hypnotize them, and then they're able to read that word now, which is pretty cool. And I revisit the hatline prediction again, again with some mild, modern, uh, some minor tweaks. So. That is everything that's in volume two for the most part, at least some of my favorite stuff. I would like to know from you guys, what are your favorite ideas out of Imagination Project volume one and volume two? If you have not already checked it out, I had, I recommend you guys head over to obrienmagic.com, take a look at these. I think that you guys will find a lot of the material in there very helpful. Between all three books, there's about a hundred different ideas in there teaching a whole range of different stuff card magic coin magic magics with objects cups and balls coin purse chop cup magic with money magic with borrowed objects right uh, book test ideas all kinds of stuff within all three of these now again if you are a mob squad member if you want to become a member click the join button below if you're already a member you do get discounts on these as well you get 20 percent off all the books on my website so make sure you take advantage of that if you're still Watching, if you're watching this video right now and it's still September, uh, that means I'm still doing my early bird special as well. So follow the link in the description below and watch the volume three um, video if you have not already. Watch that all the way to the end so you can learn how to get a discount on volume three specifically, as well as the one, two, three bundle on that same page. Now make sure that you purchase the one, two, three bundle don't just purchase volumes one, two, and three individually because you won't get a discount on all of them if you use the discount code. You need to buy the bundle in the volume three page. So make sure you guys do that. Anyways, blah, 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 blah. I'll stop talking. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoy these books. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure to click the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. That way you'll know every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to check out some more magic, visit us at obrienmagic.com and be sure to check out our online magic shop where you will find the latest and greatest magic books, downloads, and accessories.